Welcome back to the channel. Hunter here, Precision Retrofits. And I know it's been a little while, but uh, we've had quite a few projects and we've just been super busy. So we haven't had a chance to get out the camera um, and we have not hired somebody to fully full-time, full, full-time camera us. That's not a good phrase. We do have a new video for you here today. This one's a little more catered towards F-150 owners, mainly newer F-150 owners. It's a, it's a, uh, decent modification factory modification that i think you guys will like just to update you with other stuff like i said we we have like 15 things in here that uh is waiting to are waiting to be completed don't think that uh we're just ignoring our youtube channel we just have a lot of stuff going on without further ado let's get into today's video So we have a, I think it's a 2023 single cab F-150 here, 20, I already said that, 2023. <laughs> we're obviously doing a few things to it um, already, but uh, what we're doing today has to do with the interior and our pieces are actually right here. So we're doing the 12 inch factory screen with the APIM module and then the factory uh, digital gauge cluster. Be installing the screen and just gonna kind of walk you through that and, and see what it looks like. It's a fairly simple install. You will need a uh, uh, wiring harness and um, in order to install the screen into the new APIM and whatnot. You don't need a wiring harness for the digital speedometer um, cluster but you will need, if you buy it new, you will need to recalibrate, recalibrate your mileage to this digital cluster because if it's new, obviously it's going to have zero miles on it. And if your truck has 5,000 miles on it, you're going to want to correct that. So you're going to have to send that out to somebody that can actually do that. We don't do that. Don't ask us if we can do that. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to get started pulling the dash. I uh, kind of walk you through a little bit of that. I'm not going to be super explan explanatory on it, but uh, just so you kind of get the idea. So, um, yeah, let's get started on tearing this thing apart. So pretty much going to show you how you can go from this screen setup to this screen setup. Obviously this is the old screen, old uh, cluster, and we're going to go ahead and swap that. Um, the As far as pulling the trim and whatnot, it's fairly simple. You're just going to need a, a trim tool and which I don't have, I'm gonna go grab, but a trim tool and then um, pretty much you'll pop off this piece here, which you could probably even honestly just pop off with your hand right here. And uh, um, so pop this off and then you'll pop this lower piece off too. So you can get to these screws back here and um, that's at least mainly for this. You'll, you will need to um, pop this top piece off as well to get to a screw and um, that's on the back side and <clears throat> so you can pull the screen out. Uh, as far as the cluster here, uh, obviously we got this trim on the side here that needs pulled off. And then um, this, once you pop this off too, you'll have to pop this off before you can get to this original dash trim here. But uh, once you do, there's um, some more screws behind there that uh, we'll need to get off and then we can pull the trim out. Sometimes with the uh, steering wheel and if you have the, uh, uh, column shifter it's you kind of have to finagle the cluster out of here but uh, we'll try to I'll try to show you as best as possible how to do that <clears throat> but um, yeah so we're gonna go ahead I'll, I'll pull this off and then um, kind of show you from there what the next step is okay so as you can see you just pulled off all that trim so this top one that goes around off this one came off and it's all just clips uh, just get your pry tool and be careful don't break anything that one came off that whole bottom one and you can see it kind of exposed all these screws here all around here so we'll take out they're all seven millimeters so we'll take all those out these ones here and once we get these out too we'll, we'll pull this off uh, give us a little more space um, and then for the for this cluster pull that outside one off and there's some screws here you need to take off actually no, you don't need to. You'll just need to. You just need to pull this trim off, and then that way you can get 
this bezel trim off and I already pulled it off, but there's a couple screws on that bezel trim that you need to take off here um, and down here underneath the, the key itself. So undo those and then you can get your, your screws out here, here, and then there's two on the bottom as well. So um, we'll go ahead, pull those out, pull these ones out, and then uh, try to get this faceplate and this, this uh, heater controls off and then um, get all this disassembled here. So the screws that are in the back, I just want to show you real fast, kind of hard to see, but they're, they are kind of sit, oh there you go, you can see that hole. And then there's one right there too. So you can kind of see where they, those ones sit, those are on the top, and those need to come out in order to get the, the screen out. So um, if you're looking for those, there's a couple other ones that look the same, but they're, they're these uh, silver style screw is what they are. Um, pull those out so you can get the, the screen out so um, we got all the screws out of here so I'm gonna go ahead and, and pop this off and uh, keep going all right so you can see we got the, the cluster out cluster again super easy to pull out just the screws and then uh, unplug you got two plugs back here that you'll unplug and uh, you just slide it out the screen again once you get all those screws out, you can pop the bezel piece with the vents off. The, the small screen is screwed in, so that'll stay, and then you just unscrew that screen. Um, also, you'll have to unplug a couple plugs off the uh, the bezel piece, and then uh, like the they got the uh, trailer park assist plug, I believe there, and then um, that is the plug for the controls and whatnot. We haven't got the A pim out yet. We're gonna go ahead and do that next. Um, you can get away with just leaving this in and getting to the A pim if you have a small enough tool. It's a T20, I believe. There's three T20 screws on here. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll get that out and then um, uh, put the new A pim in and then kind of reverse our steps on the install. And uh, same with the screen here. You can see, see there's our old, our old speedometer new one this is the old bezel and the old screen new screen um we are since this screen you can see here it doesn't have the vent or the trailer turn trailer park assist um or the other vent then we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and swap these over it doesn't still have the button so we don't need to worry about the button but we're gonna swap these over obviously we don't need these controls um so we'll leave that this one obviously has two buttons two slots for the buttons this one has three we're going to swap these two over but there'll still be a missing slot um, and you can either get the button that's supposed to go in there you could get uh aftermarket button and install like your own lights to it whatever you want to do anyways any way you want to do it just know that there will be an empty slot because this one has the three slots instead of just the two like the factory one it's fairly simple it's just clips and and whatnot on the back side that we're gonna that we just need to get out and then snap into there so we'll, we'll do that and then come back one other thing i uh forgot to mention that i don't want to miss is you can obviously tell um on the tw ones that come with the 12 inch screen the volume control buttons is on the same piece as the heater control we don't have that piece right now so we'll install that at a later date but that's you will need that if, if you want to reinstall your um, volume and seek buttons see here it's sitting on this piece and obviously we're not using this piece because we're putting the whole screen in so um, you would need to get the the bezel uh, for the heater and volume and control knob uh, we don't have that so we're gonna we, we gotta wait on that piece um, but just so you know you will need that as well as far as bezel trim pieces go if you want to swap over your heater and or sorry your volume knobs to the other other uh Okay, so we got the screen out, we got the new cluster in. Um, again, that's just plug and play, just plugs right in. Um, <clears throat> we, were, we are gonna have to make some four scan changes though, after we're done with everything, in order to make it compatible with this truck. 
But uh, next thing is we need to install the four pin harness for the uh, new 12 inch screen. And again, there's there is a uh, there is a harness out there. I believe it's I I have seen it on like infotainment.com or something like that, where uh, it's a full on harness that uh, kind of has everything that's plug and play. You can definitely go that route. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit more simple route, maybe a little little bit cheaper. You don't have to worry about that harness that we have made work with this. Um, again, this is this is probably not the most factory way to do it, but uh, um, that's how we're going to do it on this one because uh, it, it works. So um, I have this harness here. It's uh, just a four pin harness and I'll try to share the link in the description below. But uh, it's just four pin harness that you get. It's a Ford harness. so. Um, it just all we need off this is a power wire and this power wire is actually going to go um, as you can see it's been soldered together but this power wire is actually going to run to the passenger side kick panel BCM and pin in there and then the other side has a ground uh, you can run it to the uh, the BCM if you want and pin it in that ground I'm just gonna ground it behind the screen here there's already a ground spot right here and I'm just gonna ground it there so uh, whichever you decide to do you can do and also to try to get a screenshot up of the pinning diagram so you can kind of see where and what connector this one will pin into I'm gonna go ahead and and put this in um, I'm not gonna wire the the BCM just yet I'm just gonna feed the wire through and then I'm gonna install the screen and um, reverse all the steps so we can get the screen and the and the bezels back in and then and then we'll go to uh, figuring out the power wire so we got the uh, power wire installed here uh, you can see kind of back there where it's grounded and then we ran that other part of it down um, through there behind the glove box and it just follows those factory cables nicely and then uh, I'll show you as well here in a second where that uh, pins into but uh, right now it's just mocked up so that we can test it um, it's not fully pinned in yet so we'll go ahead and clean that up but uh, we got that installed and then also too um, I forgot to mention we you do need a different um, cable that uh, will attach to the back side of the screen here um, this is the new one that's installed um, I apologize I installed it without videoing it but uh, You'll need to install that. This is the old one. You can kind of see what it looks like. Um, it it won't work with the new screen. It won't get the power that it needs to, and it actually won't even connect to the 12-inch screen. So um, you will need the the one that has the pink connector on it versus the one with the green-ish connector on it. So it it runs pretty much from here down over and then it plugs into that bottom slot that bottom blue one down there into the a pin can't get it to focus on the uh, tag here but uh, we'll try to throw the part number in there for you so you can know which one you will need but uh, those are the only two wires that you need to add and swap out for the screen itself um, but i'm going to go ahead and plug the screen in that we got here and uh, get it plugged in the power wire and then this um, other power and video wire here and then uh, I'm gonna pop the screen in and then it's pretty much from there you just need to reverse your steps as far as the, the what you did to uninstall you need to just reverse your steps for the install Okay, so for the power wire, you can see it's ran right there in the glove box here, and then it drops down over to near the BCM here, and uh, try to get some light in here. You can kind of see how we have it dropped down in here. This is the passenger side footwell BCM here, and uh, you can see which uh, plug it's going into right there on the... Uh, BCM it's that bottom it's gonna be the bottom left one um, on it and it's it's pin number 17 is what what pin it goes into um, and it, we just have it placed in there it's not tapped yet so we're gonna go ahead and tap that and clean all this up and then get it installed but uh, that's where you're gonna where we grab our power from for the radio ignition and then you can tell as we come back up here we got the screen installed and everything turn the key and you can see and remember none of our four scan changes have been done yet so that's what 
that's why the screen's smaller. But once we do our foreskin changes, that'll take care of all that. Um, but you can see we're getting our power. The radio's functioning like it should as far as the power on and power off. Um, again, still got to complete all of our changes through the software, but uh, that's where you're going to steal your power from. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to tap that in, uh, clean that power up, and then we'll come back and uh, kind of show you everything buttoned up. And uh, hopefully make some force scan changes and then uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so force scan changes are all complete. Everything's in. Obviously you'll see there's a couple pieces that we still need to get. We need, we need a button for here. We need the correct dash pad. But uh, I mean, it, it, it still functions. It's just not perfect. But uh, we're, we're wait. We're just waiting on those pieces. There's also the, we're missing the correct piece for this one so that the volume and um, uh, volume control knobs can fit in there. So <clears throat> we're just waiting on those couple pieces, but uh, we got our wiring all complete down there. Um, and the force scan changes are made and I'm gonna turn this on so I can show you. The screen comes on like it should there. We got the 75th anniversary splash screen on the on the 12 inch here. And then also too, all the drive modes still work. They have all these cool little um, animations for it. Uh, but those all function like they should. You have all your functions here. Uh, this isn't updated yet with the most recent Ford update, so we're obviously, uh, it'll it'll come in time, but uh, it hasn't had a chance to download the update yet, so it might look a little bit different um, than it will, but uh, it'll, it'll because Ford sends out their over-the-air updates all the time, so <clears throat> that'll be coming here soon. But uh, yeah, as you can see, everything here is uh, pretty much complete, and it's good to go, so. Um, I know it was a little bit more of an overview video. Um, also, too, I was going to say with the Forescan, um, I know I didn't show you explicitly how to do that, uh, but we do have a video on how to actually use Forescan and what you need for that. So go check that out. It's super helpful. Um, we've gotten a lot of feedback on it, and it's super helpful for figuring out what you need and uh, how to actually operate it. So I would suggest to go check that out. Um, but as far as the Forescan changes, all it pretty much did was I loaded the as built data into the APIM that we installed and the IPC, which is the um, instrument uh, cluster here that uh, we installed. You just need to load your as built data so that your uh, so that those modules are synced correctly with your truck. <clears throat> Um, and so, um, other than that though, uh, that's the main force scan changes you need to make. You can make, you know, a couple extras if you want, change a few different settings here and there, but for the most part, that's kind of all you need to do for it. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much it with force scan changes, but everything else pretty much, uh, it was documented. And, uh, now, you know, it's possible to, to swap out the, uh, the eight inch screen for the 12 inch screen. You can swap out the analog cluster for the fully digital cluster. Um, obviously there's some things you need to do within there within that like changing the settings um, and you need to you know write your mileage all that sort of stuff but uh, other than that um, that's pr pretty much it so um, again as far as the, the parts and pieces we don't technically sell them if you need help trying to see if you can obtain either a screen or a cluster so we can we can try to help you obtain those, get you connected with the right people um, if you need some some parts and, and whatnot for it. But uh, as far as the basics of it and what you need, it's kind of all listed in that. Um, I know it's a little bit scatterbrained here and there, but uh, it should it should pretty much help you out on what you need for it. So um, again, if you got any questions, let us know. Head over to our website precisionretrofits.com, and we'll help you out as much as you can um, with what you need. Uh, if you need if you're looking for any other products, headlights, taillights, mirrors. Uh, whatever it is you want to color match your whole truck you're local you want to bring your truck to us have us install this hit us up we'll get you taken care of but uh, I think that does it for this video um, please like subscribe and uh, turn on that notification so we can uh, let you know when we got a new video coming out we'll try to get some more coming out here as soon as possible if you got any suggestions on what you'd like to see um, we work with a lot of the newer stuff the Fords, uh, the Rams, the Chevys, the Broncos, Raptors, whatever it is, we do a lot with, with all of those. So if you want a certain video, uh, something that you might think would be helpful, let us know. But uh, until then, appreciate you for watching, and uh, we will catch you on the next one.